I found out my husband's been two-timing me. That's right. But when I realized it was somebody who he should have never had a relationship with, let me go ahead and drop a bombshell on you. Stepsister. I figured I would just write down my hurt and pain here since this is a throwaway account because I don't want anyone linking this back to me. I honestly just want your opinion on this because wow, I still can't believe that this happened to me. I also just want to know if anything like this or similar has happened to anybody. It's a long read, but it'll definitely keep you entertained, so it's worth the read. Let me give you guys some context. I'm 30, female, and I've been married to my husband for over five years. It definitely hasn't always been an easy marriage, but we have somehow always managed to make it work. He isn't the nicest person, and he isn't easy to get along with. My family has never liked him, while his family adores me. We, well, all except for his stepsister. She does not seem to like me at all, and she shows it, but I always manage to just ignore her. So, my husband has a close relationship with his stepsister. They're always together, and at first I found it weird because they have a rather large age gap of a decade, ten years. But then my husband explained to me that he spent most of his childhood as an only child, so when his father got remarried, he was so happy to finally have siblings. But what I always found weird was how he was so close to her, but not his other step-sibling. Anyways, they're like two peas in a pod. Anyways, it was a busy summer's day as I was visiting my best friend Lauren. She had invited me out for lunch since my husband was out of town for the weekend. We were busy catching up, and she asked me, How was everything going with William? I told her that things were pretty good. She raised her eyebrow at me and told me to be honest with her, and I responded by telling her that I was being honest. She then asked me, Well, did he go out of town with my sister-in-law? And I told her no, because he had gone away for business. She slightly cringed and just nodded her head. I asked her what's wrong, and she proceeded to show me my sister-in-law's Instagram page. She posted a picture of her and my husband at a wine-tasting event that took place last night. I could not believe what I was seeing. I ordered another glass of wine because I was trying to figure out why was my husband lied to me. Ugh. I mean, he's always told me when he went on trips with his sister. What made this time any different? Lauren could tell that this whole situation was bothering me, but... I decided to calm myself down and just act unbothered so that she would not start with her wild, crazy suspicions. However, she proceeded to ask me if I did not find it weird or suspicious about how close my husband and his stepsister were. She also added that I must not forget that they're technically not related by blood and are only related because their parents got legally binded. She's been asking me this for the longest time, and I didn't understand why she would always bring it up, because these two people are siblings, and there isn't anything wrong with them being close. I asked her to change the topic. Well, I headed home and could not help but think about the fact that my husband had lied to me about his so-called business trip. My husband got home the next day, and I immediately asked him about his sister's post. He laughed and told me to stop overthinking. This was an old picture. I really had no choice but to believe him because his sister had me blocked on all her social media. He reassured me by showing me a work email that confirmed that he was away on business. I apologized to him and told him that I would stop overthinking. He hugged me and told me that he would never lie to me. He then asked me about the mortgage payments and I told him that everything was still in order and that by the end of the year, the house would officially be ours. He smiled at me, gave me a kiss which surprised me because he was hardly ever affectionate. He told me that he appreciated everything that I was doing for our future. The reason he was saying that is because he was the only one who put down payment for the house and technically bought it. However, that was when he was still a supervisor at his old job. He since got fired and had to find another job. Unfortunately, his new find paid way less than what he was earning before, so he asked me if I could cover the mortgage. Since I was earning quite a lot and had just inherited a lump sum of money from my grandfather's estate, once I started paying fully for the mortgage, 
He told me that he had put me on the deed for the house and that I also owned the house, not just him anymore. I was cooking dinner when my sister-in-law walked in. She greeted my husband and ignored me like always. Normally, my husband would not say or do anything about her being rude to me, but that day he told his sister to greet me. She rolled her eyes, but then proceeded to say hello. I greeted her back and asked her if she would be joining us for dinner. She told me that she would be staying for dinner, yes. Well, while we were eating, I noticed that my husband was defending me, and every time his sister made a shady comment, he would ask her to stop being rude, and eventually he snapped at her and told her that if she did not stop with her childish behavior, then she should just leave. This came as a shock to both of us because I've never heard my husband ever raise his voice at his sister. So this was really the first time. After he had snapped at her, my sister-in-law remained quiet for the rest of the evening. Once my sister-in-law had left, I thanked my husband for defending me. He told me that he did not realize how rude she has always been to me and added that he would do better. I thanked him and went to clean the kitchen. After a few minutes, he walked into the kitchen and told me that he had a surprise for me. Okay, I asked him what it was, and he told me that he wanted us to go to an international trip for the Christmas holidays coming up, instead of just, you know, spending it with him. I told him that I would absolutely love that. He told me to do my research and that he wanted me to choose the destination. I kissed him on the cheek and told him that I could not wait for this trip. The last time we took a trip together was for our honeymoon, and that was years ago, so this trip would definitely be good for us. If only I had known that this was all part of a shady plan. Update number one. A few days have passed since my husband suggested that we take a destination trip for Christmas holidays, and honestly, that lifted my whole spirit. Um, he had been so affectionate and attentive lately, and I was soaking up every moment of it. I had just finished a night shift at the hospital, and since I didn't have any patients, I decided to not work my extra shift. I wanted to see if I could surprise my husband at breakfast well, just before he left for work. I arrived home, and it looked like he was already gone. I went to check his office, and he was not there, however... His office was so untidy that I decided that I would clean it up a bit, even though he had told me that, uh, well, to never enter his office, because it was his place of privacy and his, quote, man cave, which I never understood but just accepted it. While I attempted to clean up his office, I stumbled upon an envelope. My gut instinct told me to open up the envelope, so I did. It was written the last testament of William King. It was his will. I knew that I should not read it, but curiosity took over and I looked at it. I was hurt, shocked, absolutely by what I saw. The house that I've been paying for on my own for the past three years was going to be left to his sister. Why would he do that? Why would he leave something that belonged to both me and him and his wife and also the owner of the house? Shouldn't it be left to me? I found another document in the envelope. It was the deed of the house. It stated that my husband was the only owner of the house, but that's impossible. He told me that if I paid for the mortgage, he would then add me to the deed. I thought that maybe this was an old, outdated, you know, deed. Only to read the date at the bottom of the document and discover that it was newly updated. Meaning that he never put me on the deed to begin with. Why would he lie to me about something so serious? And most importantly, why was he leaving our entire house to his sister as if she doesn't work or something like that? I went ahead to take pictures of the documents so that I could ask Lauren for more legal information about this since she's an attorney. I also decided that I would not confront my husband about this until I had all the facts. To make sure that my cover would not be blown... I tried my best to put things back to where they were so that it would not show that I have been there. A few more days passed, and I'd sent Lauren the pictures of the document so that she could find out more information, which she promised she would do. I needed to confirm everything so that I could make my next move. It had been pondering in my head if my sister-in-law knew about this. Maybe she had no idea about this, and I knew that she did not like me, but I doubted that she had any part of this because maybe my husband wanted to leave her the house. 
so that she would have a place to stay if things ever got bad. Which would be sweet, but he had not discussed any of this with me. He had major updates coming with decisions without me, which I found very suspicious. While we were sleeping, I took my husband's phone. Luckily, he was a deep sleeper, so it was easy to grab it. I searched for his chats, and with his sister, I was absolutely gobsmacked, disgusted, and heartbroken by what I saw. Their chats were filled with very flirtatious messages, very inappropriate pictures, that no married man should be sending or receiving, especially from his sister. I also found out that he was actually out of town with his sister, and that the picture she posted on her Instagram was not as old as he claimed it to be. It was their thing, going out of town together so that they could have their little affair. I started feeling very nauseous. I was so disgusted by this whole thing. Even though I wanted to confront him so badly, I knew that right now was not the right time. Before I put his phone back, I took screenshots of their conversations and quickly sent them to myself. I deleted the evidence, of course, so that he would not figure out that I knew. After that, I just left the house, and as much as I could not confront him, I could not lay and sleep right next to him knowing what I now know. So I decided to go to Lauren's. As I drove to her place, tears were rolling down my face and my cheeks, and my heart felt so heavy. I couldn't stop crying. I was heartbroken and felt so betrayed by the man that I loved and had given over five years of my life to. My family did not even like him. They thought that he was too rude and mean, so it was difficult for me to visit them because they didn't want to be around my husband. I sacrificed so much for this man, and this is how he repays me? By lying to me, trying to take away my home, and worst of all, cheating on me with his own stepsister. I felt like vomiting, but I continued driving. I got to Lauren's place and was so distraught. She helped me get inside because I was hysterical, and after crying my heart out, I eventually calmed down and explained everything to her. She kept quiet for a moment and sighed, and I asked her what was on her mind. She took a deep breath, told me that she had always suspected this and that she had tried to warn me, but it always seemed like I wanted to just see the good in my husband. Guys, I started to cry all over again, because what she was saying was true. Lauren had always been suspicious of how close my husband and his stepsister were, especially because he had no relationship with his other step-siblings. He always told me that he did not get along with them, because they were toxic and full of drama, which I found quite odd. After all, his sister was exactly like that, yet he had a close relationship with her. I eventually stopped crying and told Lauren that I would not allow my husband to get away with any of this. I told her that I wanted revenge and that I wanted to punish both my husband and sister-in-law. Lauren then told me that she would help me with my plan of revenge. There was no way in hell that I was going to allow them to get away with screwing me over like this. Update number two. I've learned that it doesn't matter how many years have passed by. The truth will always find its way out to come. It's just that I've never expected the truth to hurt me this bad, um, but that's life for you. I stayed at Lauren's house for a few days and told my husband that I was busy assisting her with a community project. He obviously believed it because he probably saw it as an opportunity to mess around with his sister without me around. Anyways, I've been meeting up with lawyers to find out what I should do about this whole situation. I didn't want to face any legal implications, and I also did not want my husband to find any loopholes. I needed this plan to be rock-hard solid, in order for my revenge to be sweet. Before I could go back home, I decided to go to the bank and I removed myself from being the person in charge of the mortgage. The lady at the bank had warned me that if no payments were made, then the house would end up being in foreclosure. Well, I, yeah, I said, yeah, nodded my head and smiled when she told me that because that was all part of my plan. To ensure that my plan worked, I acted as if I knew absolutely nothing and pretended like everything was fine. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but I had to do it. 
My husband never suspected a thing, and I continued to act like the innocent kind of wife that he was used to. My sister-in-law hardly came around the house anymore, which made pretending a bit easier. Because what if she pushed one of my buttons and I just exploded and would have ruined everything, so her not being around worked in my favor. A few more months passed by, and during those months I discovered that I was pregnant. It was still the early stages because I had a little slip-up and slept with my husband just to avoid having him become suspicious. This pregnancy literally could not have come at a better time. I'd always wanted to start a family, but my husband had told me that he didn't want kids, which broke my heart because I'd always wanted kids. However, this was not the way I planned on having a child with my husband. It was a cold day, and I was sitting in the living room. My husband stormed into the living room with an evil smirk on his face, and the words that came out of his mouth were shocking, but I was not surprised. He told me that he wanted a divorce, and that he also wanted me out of his house before the end of the day. He had this annoying grin on his face. In his mind, he thought that I'd finally made the last payment on the mortgage. He told me that he never loved me, and that I wasn't even his type. He continued to tell me that I was useless and had absolutely no backbone. No wonder people always walked all over me. He also said that he could no longer be with such a weak woman. He needed somebody strong. I slowly sipped on my hot chocolate and just smiled at him, which confused him. I then proceeded to ask him if the strong woman he was referring to was his sister. He immediately tensed up. He then asked me, what am I talking about? I laughed and just put my cup down. I told him that I knew all about his disgusting, immoral affair with his stepsister. He told me that I was crazy and that I had no idea what I was even saying. I told him that I saw everything on his phone. He gulped loudly. When he realized that I wasn't lying, he told me that no one would ever believe me and he started insulting me by calling me all sorts of names. All of a sudden, his stepsister came barging in. I gasped in shock because I was so shocked by her appearance, to be honest with you. She was pregnant. Her belly was showing and she looked about five or six months pregnant. So it all made sense. The reason why she never came over any longer was because she was pregnant. And I was pretty sure that it must have been my husband's child. She glared at me and told me to get the hell out of the house, and my body was boiling with anger. She told me that her brother was going to leave the house to her, and she didn't want me in it, and that she was happy that he was divorcing me. I asked if she was happy because his divorcing me meant that he could finally marry her. She froze and immediately turned to look at my husband, and I could see the fear in her eyes. I then told her that I knew all about their affair and that I was just waiting for the perfect time to let them know. She screamed at me, and I politely asked her not to scream because she was going to cause both our babies to be distressed. The both, they just glared at me in shock, and my sister-in-law was boiling with anger. Shocked by the news, she started screaming at my husband. She screamed that he was a liar, and she knew that she could not trust him. My husband told her that this was the first time hearing about this and if I was lying. I took out my phone and showed, well, a scan that I've taken a few days ago. My husband's face turned pale and my sister-in-law was beyond angry. My husband then proceeded to tell my sister-in-law that their plan had worked and that she should not allow any of this to change anything. He told her the house was theirs and that he was still kicking me out. Well, I started laughing and told him that he was such an idiot. He then rudely admitted that the only reason he was being sweet and affectionate towards me was that I could finish up with the mortgage payments. He continued to tell me that it was all part of his plan so that he could keep the house and make sure his sister would always have security. I just continued to laugh and laugh and he called me a psychopath and that if I did not pick up my bags and leave, he's going to call the police. Well, I then dropped the revenge bomb on him, just like that, and told him that the house was in foreclosure, and it's been officially sold. They both looked at me with disbelief, and he told me that's impossible, because the house was under his name. I told him that it was under his name, and also told him that it had missed six months of payments, whoopsie. He yelled that I was supposed to be paying, and I laughed right to his face. 
I told him I removed my bank account the moment I found out about his little foul plan and affair. I told him that there's no way in hell that I was going to allow him to take me home, a home that I was paying for. Well, my sister-in-law started screaming and attempted to slap me, but I grabbed her arm. I told her that she was lucky that she was pregnant, otherwise I would have given her a beating of a lifetime. She frowned and stepped away from me. I proceeded to tell them that this house belonged to none of us. My husband then told me that he never loved me and that he only married because he wanted a piece of my inheritance. He told me he married me out of convenience and that he planned to get his hands on my assets. Well, as soon as he uttered those words, my already broken heart continued to break because it hit me that this man truly never loved me and that I wasted eight years of my life with him. I took out my phone and posted all the screenshots and pictures I'd sent myself from his phone all over social media. I showed my phone to them and told them that now everybody would know about their disgusting affair. They both absolutely froze, and I could see the stress in both their eyes, but I didn't care. I felt no remorse for what I've done. They deserved this, and they deserved everything that was coming their way. My sister-in-law tried to attack me with her pregnant self, but my husband held her back and told her to calm down and that they needed to come up with a plan on how they were going to tackle me exposing their affair on social media. I shook my head and went upstairs to pack what I could. By the time Lauren came to fetch me, my husband and sister-in-law were nowhere to be found. As we headed off to Lauren's, which where I will be staying for the next few weeks, I was receiving tons of calls and texts from family members who were asking me about what I had just posted. I decided to switch off my phone. This wasn't my mess to deal with. It was my stupid husband and stepsister's mess. Update number three. Hey guys, final update. A couple of months have passed by since that eventful morning of revenge. I'm now six months pregnant with a baby girl, which I'm super excited about. I have my own apartment now. I'm also currently going through a divorce, and it was actually me that had instituted this divorce because a few days later, my husband came to my workplace to beg me to fix things with him. He told me that he had made a huge mistake and that it was all his stepsister's fault. She was the one who had seduced him and told him that it was okay for them to have an affair since they weren't blood-related. He tried by all means to explain his actions and why he did what he did, but to me it was all just an excuse. I knew that he was just doing this because he knew that he would not be able to afford the lifestyle that he's been living without me. I did not obviously take him back. He was never good enough for me anyways. The house did end up getting sold, which I was happy about. My future ex-husband moved to a different town because he was so embarrassed by everything. He went completely ghosted, deleted all his social media, changed his number, which I found out during our divorce trial. I don't know uh, how he's doing and what he's even doing, but all I know is that I never ever want to see him again. My ex-sister-in-law also tried to reach out to apologize to me, which I did not accept because I felt it wasn't genuine. She's given birth to a baby boy. However, because my ex-husband disappeared, she's not heard from him for the last couple of months. He even missed the birth of his own child. She's really going through it because her family cut her off once they found out about the little affair. So, she doesn't have anyone. But that's what happens when you mistreat people and commit such disgusting, horrible acts. I've luckily reconnected with my family and they were very happy about me divorcing my husband. Everything's finally going well for me. It hasn't been easy. I really did love my ex-husband, so getting over him was really tough. I don't even think I'm fully over him yet, but I'll get there. A part of me does feel bad that my revenge plan made my ex-husband disappear, and that it's also caused my sister-in-law's family to be cut off. Maybe I went too far exposing their affair publicly. Maybe I should have just stuck to making him lose the house. Well, it's too late now. What's been done's been done, and there's no going back. It seemed like a lot of the comments were super upset about the fact that OP went ahead to expose the relationship between her cheating ex and his stepsister. 
In my opinion, I don't know why those commenters were so upset. If they were putting their self in OP's position and OP's shoes and had to realize that, well, your significant other has been going behind your back and using you, not only for the mortgage, but also for a fake image, just so he could have an affair in the background with his stepsister. Go to these work business trips and just pretend to be at work, but he's really with her. So if you think about that, guys, I don't think what OP did is too crazy. I mean, let's be real. What would you do? Drop it in the comment section down below. Let's discuss that, guys. I would love to find out. Go ahead, drop a comment. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate these stories every day. So, if you want to be a part of the drama stories, go ahead, hit that subscribe button while you're at it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day, and remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.